welcome to Sunday Worship with St. Matthew's Episcopal Church. Whether you are joining us from around the corner or around the globe, we are happy to have you with us today. I'd like to give a special welcome to Mo in San Diego and Priscilla right here in Sterling. Thanks to Priscilla for letting me film in front of her gorgeous flowers today. We'd be so grateful if you would consider sharing the service today on social media. You never know how someone's day might be brightened by worshiping with you. On behalf of all of us at St. Matthew's, I want to say how excited we are to have you with us today. So let's get started. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray O God the King of glory you have exalted your only Son Jesus Christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven do not leave us comfortless but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God in glory A reading from Acts. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together the crowd numbered about 120 persons. 
and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And then they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Join me in reading from Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from 1 John. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes in life, we face an uncertain future, or if you're like me, sometimes we even dig ourselves into a hole. The great thing about scripture is that it gives us a way ahead and a way out. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I have revealed to those whom you gave me, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew a certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for, those who have, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. 
Oh, I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name, by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them and they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that, not that you take them out of the world, but you, that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. <laughs> Next Sunday is Pentecost, and we're so excited about Pentecost. We have so much good stuff in store for you. Uh, Mary Margaret and I are preaching a joint sermon once again. We're excited about that. We packed the service just jam full of great content, so please uh, don't, miss, don't miss next Sunday. Uh, today, we want to talk a little bit about how we move into the next phase of our life, uh, together, the next stage of our life, and just in general, how we make good decisions. And we want to do so by looking at the reading from Acts, because in Acts, the disciples are moving into their next stage, the next phase of their life together. Uh, there are uh, there are one person down. Um, uh, Judas, of course, has died and is no longer with them. Uh, the church is just at its very start, its very inception, and, and so they've got to figure out the path ahead. What comes next? And, and, and today's, today's uh, reading from Acts is the story of how they make that decision. And I, I think that story is, um, is helpful. Uh, I find it helpful, and I think, I think you might find it helpful as well. And we are in this weird time uh, as things change again, as we do seek God's leading as for what comes next to us. I love seeing the people that we're seeing live on Sunday morning, but I miss seeing so many of you who I don't see on Sunday morning, who I was seeing here, who we were able to chat with or have side conversations with or who I would see on Zoom in the, in the uh, coffee hours, the fellowship times after the services. Uh, if you get a chance, just Drop me a line. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what's going on in your life. I, I pray for you, as you know. I go through the church directory. I go through my Facebook friends list. I use those as my prayer lists. Uh, and I pray for you on a regular basis. And, and when I know how you're doing, what's going on in your life, that helps me pray a, a little bit more intelligently. And also, I just like to know because I because I miss you. And, uh, and I hope that our paths do cross in person uh, again soon. So, the disciples, this next phase of their life, um, where do they start? Well, they start with, with biblical principles. And, and, and biblical principles are different than biblical practices. Practices are bound to a culture. They're bound to a time. They change. But what we're looking for are the principles behind the practices. And I'd suggest that understood properly, those principles do not change. And so the disciples, they look back to, to the Old Testament and in the Old Testament, they see this, this uh, passage that they understand that says, when you're, when you're a person down, uh, get the, t the full team up to speed so you can do the work that needs to be done. And that's basically understood on its most simple level. The, the, the passage says, get the help you need. They, they could have chosen otherwise. They could have said, you know what? It was so painful uh, watching what happened with, with, with Judas. And it's interesting how Peter refers to Judas in this passage. He was one of us. He did ministry with us. We shared life together. You can hear grief. You can hear sorrow. You can hear remorse. You can hear love. There's not anger. There's not vengeance. It's this, it's this, it's this sadness. They could have said, this was just too painful. We're not going to be burned again. We're not going to take another chance. Eleven's good enough. We're going to stick with eleven. We're not going to replace them. But they see this principle. that says, you know, basically get the help you need. Um, when, when it comes to doing the work that God has to do, God's work is so important. Make sure your team is built out. Make sure that you have everybody on board that needs to be on board. Um, they could have said, you know what? We're sufficient. <laughs> I'm good. I'm pretty darn good. So I don't really need any other help. God's called me, so why would I need anybody else? And they could have said, I'll do this on my own. A lot of people make that decision. Sometimes I make that decision. But that's not the biblical principle. The biblical principle is get the help you need. When it comes to doing the work that God has given us to do, that work is so important. Build the team out so that we can make the most of the opportunities that are there before us. 
Now, as we move into this next phase of our life, what principles might we be looking at? And, uh, and I, I think there's a bunch, and this is why it's so important that we read the Scripture on a regular basis, because we find those, those principles by which we order our lives. And, and if you're a person of faith and you understand the, the principles that come out of Scripture as being God is our creator, and as such, God knows us better than anybody else, and God understands us better than anybody else, and so th these principles are like the operating manual. God has more insight into uh, hum it's what it means to be human and to be human at our best than anybody or anything else does. And so, and so we build our lives, we order, order, organize, we order our lives, structure our lives around these principles properly understood. And so as I, as I think of what this next phase looks at, at us, a couple areas in Scripture that I personally have been looking at are, for one, for instance, um, is the... Uh, is was the conflict that occurred around meat that was offered to idols in the in in the early church, and so in the early church they really did worship idols. Um, maybe they worshipped a Godzilla idol, look like this. Somehow I don't really think so. But but they had uh, idols, and so uh, they would put they would put food out for their idols, and because idols were just idols, you know, they never ate the food. So they said, what what should we do with with this? Um, with this food. And some people said, hey, let's eat it. Uh, and other people said, oh no, it's, it's corrupt. It's evil. It's been, it's been, it's been uh, profaned. And to eat it would be a sin against God, God's self. And so it developed, it, it, it created these great factions as their practices varied. And we've, well, we've been living in a time for a long time where people's practices have varied. But as we continue to open things up, practices are varying very widely. And what one person is comfortable with, another person isn't comfortable with, what another person feels good about, another person doesn't feel good about. And, and so much like the early church, and what was the principle by, that, that it's commended to the people as they navigate uh, meat that's offered to idols and what to do with it? The, the principle was you lean as far towards the person who is different than you as you can, and then you lean further still. <laughs> you lean as far towards the person who has a different position as you do, and then you lean further still. You're as gracious as gracious can be, and then you're more gracious still. I'm more gracious still. And that seems to me to be a great principle by which to organize our lives right now. Uh, and it's a very different principle by, by, than the principle by which our society is organizing itself right now, which has nothing at all to do with graciousness. But as people of faith, as people who follow Jesus, as people who organize our, our lives on the principles that Jesus taught us, this is surely one of those principles that, that rather than the divisive rhetoric and behavior, that we are gracious in our dealings with one another and particularly in our dealings with those who are different uh, from us. We lean as far towards them as we can and then we lean a little bit further still. Another principle I might take is, uh, and this is another section of, of Scripture I've been reading, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, there's, there's a portion of Scripture that is written during the exile when the Jewish nation was conquered. They were led, led out of Israel to live in a foreign land. And so they could no longer do life as they remembered, life that was normal for them. And they mourned all the losses and the, and the things, the loss of familiarity and the things that they didn't have access to or opportunity, a lot like our last year in some ways. I mean, even worse than that, I don't mean to trivialize exile, but but would share some of the the experience would have some commonality with with our experience. And so, as they came out of the exile, it's like our coming out of uh, of quarantine. It's like our coming out of 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 life in pandemic. Uh, and and they come out of it. They return home, and there's this wonderful scripture, one of my favorite of all scriptures. When we sat by the Negev, a, a local water course, then were we like those who dream. What are, they, what are they saying? When we got back home, when we got back to the life that we loved, the life that we so missed, we got back to us. It was like a dream come true. And I've experienced that. I mean, just recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, Amy and Scott King. Hello, Amy. Hello, Scott, who are friends that we've made online through this service. Um, they were in town and so and they came to a service they 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 joined us for a service it was so good to see them and so uh, my wife and I and Mary Margaret we took them out for lunch afterwards and we sat outside at Chewy's and we had this um we had this great lunch together and 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 it was just fantastic and so as we sat with 
people we loved in a setting that we is from it was familiar that you know that I love eat, ate great food that I loved then were we like dream people who dream it was, it was it was like a dream come true but but what happened to the people when they came out of the exile and they went back to life as they knew it before is they forgot God and so they'd been so dependent on God while they were in exile they knew they needed God but when they got back to 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 life as they longed for it. It was like vengeance living. You know, they had to make up for all this lost time. And they were so busy making up for all this lost time, they forgot about God and that did not go well for them. And this is this is the pattern of so much of actually individual human lives and of our, our life together as a human race is there are behaviors that create problems. We address the symptoms of those uh, behaviors just enough to solve the problem in the short term. Uh, but then once it feels like the problem solved, we just revert back to what we were doing before and the behavior comes and, and the problem occurs once again. It's the old adage that that which we do not actually repair, we repeat. If we don't actually repair it, if we don't actually make changes, if we don't actually do something differently in the long haul, then we're just going to repeat the problem process. Uh, and, and, so, and so for Israel, when they forget God, they just repeat the problem process. And, and for us, as we come out of quarantine, as we move into this next phase of life together, um, if we forget God, we're just going to repeat the problem process. Uh, so, so that speaks to me uh, very, very uh, much how important it is that I remember God as I get back to the business of living. Um, I know that's going to be important for me. expect that might be important for you too. So we're so grateful you've stuck with us this far. Uh, we really, really are. We know that it's not been easy. Um, and please uh, continue to make God the priority as we get back to life. Uh, to, to the richness of life as, as we remember it. Um, let's continue to make God a priority because we still need God because God is every bit as important in some ways, even more important now than ever. Uh, the next thing that they do is they're crystal clear about what they want. So they, so they find biblical principles and they act on those biblical principles. Then they're crystal clear about what they want. What do they want? Well, they want someone who can bear witness to Jesus. They could have chosen someone who, they, they could have wanted someone who is well-connected, for instance. That would have led to a different choice. They could have wanted someone who is great at raising money. That would have led to a different choice. But what they wanted was they wanted someone who could bear witness to Jesus. And that made clear what their standards would be. Uh, they had to be someone who was with them from the start, for instance. And so it's important for us, too, as we think about the decisions before us, in general, and the decisions that are before us in the next few months as things start to open up and what and how we are or are not going to live into those openings, um, what do we want? And, and there's infinite numbers of choices. We could want to stay safe. Maybe that's a choice. Maybe that's the number one thing I want is I want to stay safe. Maybe I want to manage risk well. That's a different thing than staying safe um, because managing risk well acknowledges that we can't always keep ourselves safe, uh, but we, we just want to minimize the chances that something uh, bad happens. Or we might make a decision that we want to live life at its fullest. We got to get back. That somewhere along the line, we got to get back to life, uh, and that's going to lead to a very different set of behaviors and choices and practices as well. So we need to be clear about that, and and that's going to that's going to differ from person to person to person. That's where we go back to point. That's where we go back to the point before biblical principles. Be lean as far towards a person who's different from you, and then lean further still. Be as gracious as gracious can be, and then be gracious more gracious still. Uh, but we have to be clear about about what it is that we actually want. And then that makes clear what our next steps will be uh, about, about what the standards are that we'll observe and practice to get to the next steps. And, and by the way, sometimes, and um, sometimes the, um, the, the standards uh, are wrong. And that's one of the interesting things about this story. When they, when, they, when they create their criteria, if you will, that's what I want to say. Sometimes the criteria is wrong, uh, by which they were going to uh, put someone forward who's going to be the best witness to Jesus. Although it's not said explicitly, tacitly, it's understood that this person is going to be a man. So part of the criteria is that this person is male. And that limited this decision quite a bit. Uh, there are those who would have asserted that Mary should have been the 12th apostle because she was, in fact, the very first apostle. 
Um, and when they only saw the possibilities of being, of being male, that limited the work that God was able to do in the world. And the, there are people who understand that still, and that still limits the work that God uh, wants to do in the world. And it still causes hurt and pain uh, in the world. And so, and so the church, as, they've sought, as we have sought to live into the fullness of God's spirit, the fullness of what God's doing, and understand that what God wants is to create a community, a family in which all people are valued and in which all gifts are brought to the table because to do the magnitude, the, impor the, 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 the important work of, that God has given us to do and the magnitude of the work that God is going to do takes all of us and all of our gifts and all of our abilities uh, brought to the table. And so now when we look at leadership in the church and the highest levels of leadership, in the, we, we don't say the criteria is we don't. Uh, some people do, but we don't. We don't say criteria is that person has to be male. No, that was a mistake. Uh, that criteria needed to be corrected. And, uh, and now, in fact, we invite women uh, to, uh, uh, to, um, to occupy the very highest offices uh, um, in, in the church. And, and you know that, it's, for instance, so in the Episcopal Church, our last presiding bishop was, in fact, uh, a woman. A, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so sometimes uh, the criteria, sometimes we need to look to reconsider our criteria uh, because sometimes our criteria is just wrong. Um, and that's important. You know, that's important. Uh, the things that we think we know so well, sometimes we just need to hold a little bit, we need to hold a little bit or a lot more loosely um, because it may be that, that um, God wants to do something different. Um, it may be that our criteria aren't serving us as well as we think they are. Um, so hard, but important. Well, the next thing they do is they pray. Uh, they say, God, guide this process. And then they roll the dice, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Uh, if you're thinking about coming back to church, how would you decide? You roll the dice, if it comes up, you play Yahtzee. If you get a Yahtzee, come back to church. If I don't, I, I won't. It doesn't seem like that'd be helpful. And here's where the difference between practices and principles comes in. This practice of rolling the dice, that was located in a specific time, a specific place, a specific culture. We wouldn't engage in that practice today for that purpose. The principle behind it, that we pray and ask God to guide us, that we want to continue to practice. So whenever we're making any kind of decision, we want to ask God. And the prayer we invite us to say, and you know this prayer, is God, what would you have me do? God, what would you have me do? And then really listen for the answer. Make that space uh, within ourselves to hear uh, God speak, uh, to, to sense God's leading. God, what would you have me do? To pray about what uh, the decision would be. And then when God's will becomes clear, when the choice becomes clear, to act, which is what the disciples do. They, it, it, the dice roll Matthias, Matthias becomes one of the 12, and they go straight about the work of bearing witness to Jesus. And so in the same way, particularly those of us who sometimes um, experience uh, the uh, paralysis of analysis and sometimes having a hard time acting, it's important that once we've made a decision that we act on that decision, that we get out and do the work that God has given us to do. And this is reason 1,679 that I love you and I love St. Matthew's is you are an action-oriented people, an action-oriented church, is that we make decisions and we make those decisions, we act. We don't just sit on resources. We don't just sit on opportunities. We don't just uh, sit on, on, on money. Um, <laughs> it's a funny image. We don't just sit on the people that God brings uh, our way. But, but once God has made God's will clear, we put all these things uh, into action to do the incredible work that God has given us to do. And that's why St. Matthew's came out of this last year even stronger than we went into it. Because because we just we didn't just sit around, but we acted on all the ways that God was leading us, doing the work that God has given us to do uh, in in greater ways than we ever, in fact, would have dreamed possible. So uh, that's the, those are the, the that that's the decision making process. Uh, I'd commend that to you. Please know that we are uh, putting all those things in practice as we consider what the next phases of our life together is, um, and and I trust that you're doing the same thing. And I personally am so excited about what God has in store for us next. And I can't wait to live into it with you. Amen. Amen. And now let us reaffirm our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all the bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to your will in all that we undertake. That work, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also, may we also come to shine in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We give thanks to God for those celebrating their birthdays this week, especially Hillary, Sheila, Jackie, Felix, Colin, Jack, Charlie, Connor, and Shale, and all others who this week begin another year of their life. We also give thanks to God for those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage, especially Gina and Mike, Penny and Dan, Anne and Gregory, Kathleen and Brian, Uta and Juan, Lacey and Randy, Donna and Carrie, Michelle and Gregory, and Don and Colin. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Hello! Thanks for being with us today. We have a few important dates coming up at St. Matthew's, and I'd like to take just a moment to share those updates with you. Next Sunday, May 23rd, we will celebrate Pentecost. This day is often remembered as when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, and it will be one of great celebration and fun. Next week, many of us will be wearing red to symbolize the joy and fire of the Holy Spirit. If you are joining us at home or in person, we invite you to wear red as well. Next Sunday, you'll also hear incredible music and an incorporation of different languages and landscapes from around the world as a celebration of the church's mission to the world, welcoming our beautiful, diverse, and global family. The following Sunday, May 30th, we have a schedule change, so pay close attention here. All of our pre-recorded virtual services will take place as regularly scheduled. In fact, 
May 30th will be our last pre-recorded service before we switch back to live streaming from the sanctuary like we used to do before the pandemic. And rest assured, those live stream services will still happen at the usual times, 8, 9.30, and 11. The change on May 30th comes for those of you who are ready to join us in person. On Sunday, May 30th, we will have just one outdoor worship service, and it will take place at Algonquian Park at 11 a.m. We invite you to bring a picnic and stay after the service to enjoy time together. We'll provide a variety of games like cornhole and scavenger hunts, and we invite you to participate in those as you feel comfortable. For those of you who are planning to join us in person, we are starting a new RSVP system, and we ask you to please let us know if you're planning to attend in-person worship. This RSVP system will help us ensure physical distancing, allow you to choose worship space, and assist in contact tracing if needed. Please RSVP for the upcoming services using the link below. We can't wait to see you. Have a blessed week, everyone. Now, let's get back to the service. Let us with gladness present the gifts and offerings of our life and labor to the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hi, I'm Cindy Kunkel, and I have been coming to St. Matthew's Episcopal Church off and on over the past 20 years. Uh, my dearest friend Vicki Nelson introduced me to the church, and I've always felt uh, very welcomed unconditionally by the congregation. I became involved in the Backpack Buddies program back in April of 2020 when COVID first hit. Um, I became consumed with fear um, and I needed to take that fear and put it into something positive. So I reached out to Miriam at the church and was um, given the Backpack Buddies program. Um, I contribute eight bags a week to that program in the hopes of um, making our neighbors feel loved and cared for. And um, the best part of it is picking out the snack, which could be anything from a hostess cupcake to a um, animal crackers but whatever it is I know that it's going to bring a smile to someone's face and and that just makes me happy. I'm incredibly lucky to be in a position that I can help and um, even the smallest gestures of generosity and and help contribute to our neighbors and that in turn um, makes our communities stronger. It builds our communities up and um, makes us all able to handle the, the difficult times. 
So when we're all working together to build our communities and our neighborhoods, then uh, we're all better off. But if you're considering um, helping, uh, just go ahead and get out there and do it.